There was once a village where everyone was rich. Well, everyone except one little man who was astonishingly poor. And all the rich people oh, laughed at him and called him the stupid little peasant and threw bits of mud and rubbish at him because they didn't like poor people. Look! Oh, how horrid! And in fact, the village was called Horrid on Sea. The rich peasants had beautiful houses, fields full of cows as far as the eye could see, and they had 50 pound notes with jam on for breakfast. About six each. But the little peasant was so poor, he had to eat twigs with no jam. Yeah. And when he and his wife had eaten all the twigs for miles around, they had to start eating the floor of their hut. This mm, floorboard's a bit chewy, said his wife. Mm, makes a nice change, though. Well, the little peasant was sad to see his wife getting mouthfuls of splinters every night because he loved her very much. And so, one night, Instead of eating his floorboard, he decided to make her a special present from it. And as she had always wanted to have some cows, he made the floorboard into a little calf. Well, it wasn't big enough to make into a cow. Oh, you! Oh, what a wonderful present, said his wife. It looks completely real. Hey, why don't we put it out to graze with all the other calves? And the next morning, when all the cows from the village were being driven out to the fields, <laughs> the little peasant called out to the cow herd, Hey, I've got a little calf too. Take him along and be sure you look after him well. Oh, righty-ho, said the cow herd. And he took the wooden calf to the top of a cliff and <laughs> chucked it in the sea. Splosh! <laughs> Serve him right for being a poor peasant. But the poor peasant saw him doing it and grabbed him by the nose and took him to the mayor. He threw my only calf over the top of the cliff, your worship. What was an accident? It wasn't an accident. If it was an accident, why did you shout Geronimo? What's a speech impediment? Both of you shut up. Pop, pop. Either way, it was very careless, said the mayor. Right, cowherd, you'll give the little peasant a cow to replace his lost calf. Hey, but don't worry, because I'll pick which one you have to give him. <laughs> Geronimo, nice one. And because the mayor didn't like the little peasant either, he picked the most sickly, manky, 10,000-year-old cow and gave him that. Well, the little peasant rushed home. Look, wife, we got a real cow. Bonk. Oh, no, it's dead. They don't last long, do they? This farm is a lark, isn't it? Oh, well, never mind. It can't be helped, said his wife. Take it, skin off, and see what you can get for it down the market. What do you get much for a cow with no skin? Ugh. No, I mean sell the skin, you dope. Oh, <laughs> right. So the little peasant set off to town with his cow skin under his arm. And, whoa, now it started pouring with rain, like all the clouds were tipping out their paddling poles. Oh, no. And up ahead, he saw a rich farmer's house. So he ran, and he knocked on the door. There's no one at home. Please, let me in. Well, are you rich? No. Well, get lost then. Please, let me in. I'm soaking wet. Oh, all right. Come on in, said the voice. The door opened and there stood the rich farmer's sneaky brother. Well, come in quickly and don't rip on the furniture. <laughs> are you hungry? Oh, yes, I am very hungry. Well, tough. There's no food. Um, would you like a comfortable bed for the night? Oh, yes, please. Well, you can't have one. Lie down over there in that puddle and make sure you roll around a bit and soak up all the water. Save me getting the mop out. The little peasant lay down in the puddle and pretended to fall asleep. <whistles> oh, good, the sneaky brother said. The little stinking poor person is asleep. <laughs> then, out of the corner of his eye, the little peasant saw the sneaky brother go into the cupboard and bring out a huge roast turkey, a bucket of ice cream, a bag of sweets as big as my bottom, and a gallon of lemonade. 
And he just said there wasn't any food. He was a liar. And the sneaky brother started eating. <laughs> Slurpily and burpily and so greedily he had two spoons in each hand. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> this is my favourite thing. Ow, that's the plate. <laughs> well, it's my second favourite thing. <laughs> my favourite thing would be <laughs> if I was the mayor. Oh, I'd love to be the mayor. <laughs> if I was the mayor, I could, I could eat. Every, oh, excuse me. I could eat everyone's food. I could boss everyone around. And they'd all have to smile at me, even when I was pinching them. Because I'd be the mayor. <laughs> and suddenly he heard, Hello, I'm home. Oh, no. It's my good brother. I must hide the food. And the sneaky brother was in such a panic, he hid all the food in the bed. <laughs> Oh, ah, ah, dear brother. Ah, ah, excuse me. Ah, thank goodness you're back again. I was so worried. Well, the good farmer saw the peasant lying on the floor. Well, who's that lion in the puddle? Oh, um, that, um... Well, uh, well, you know me. It's just some, uh, just some poor person I was very kind to. Well, that's very good, said the farmer. We must all be very kind to poor people. Now, could I have something to eat, please? I am starving. Oh, um, no, you can't. Uh, I'm, uh, uh, oh, dear, I think I've, I've given all the food away to poor people. <laughs> and there's only this bit of uh, mouldy bread left. But the good farmer went over to the little peasant, and woke him up and said, Hello, little poor person. I've got a piece of mouldy bread. Would you like half of it? And you can't be comfortable on the floor. Get up and go and lie in the bed. Uh, no, not no, not the bed. Um, because uh, <laughs> he absolutely insisted on lying on the floor. You love it down there, don't you? Say yes. Well, there's not much room in the bed, said the peasant, with all this food in it. And the good farmer gasped with amazement when he saw the feast under the quilt. <gasps> Goodness gracious, he said. Why is all that food in the bed? Uh, 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 I don't know, uh, uh, maybe it was tired. And the sneaky brother had to sit at the table and share out his secret food with the other two. Ah, this is delicious, said the good farmer. Well done, little peasant. Here's a present. And he lifted up a floorboard. Oh, thank you, the wife and I'll enjoy that, said the little peasant, taking the floorboard. No, no, not that, you silly billy, said the farmer. Have all this money that I keep in the floor. And he gave him 300 pieces of gold. <gasps> oh, thanks, said the little peasant, and ran all the way home to his wife. And straight away they spent all the money building a fantastic house. With 70 bedrooms, a boating lake, six tennis courts, its own fun fair, and that was just in the kitchen. But all the rich peasants said, oh no, it's bigger than any of our houses. Oh no, we can't have that, no. And the little peasant was dragged before the mayor, who said, Yesterday you were poor. Now you have the biggest house in town. You must have stolen some money. Oh no, said the little peasant. You see, there was this farmer. Yeah, uh, uh, and you stole all his money. Don't you argue with me. I'm the mayor. Who's the mayor? I'm the mayor. I'm the mayor because I'm so hard. Watch. Mm. Oh, see? Hard, right? Where's he gone? Oh, there he is. And as for you, you're a thief. I sentence you to be put in a barrel full of holes and roll into the sea to drown. So that's what the villagers did. And they rolled him right up to the top of a cliff that leant out over the sea. But just as they reached the edge of the cliff, the mayor said, Hang on, time for lunch. Back in an hour, everyone. And as they were all very greedy, they forgot what they were doing and ran home for lunch. And as he sat in his barrel, through one of the little holes, the peasant saw the sneaky brother walking past with a huge herd of sheep that he'd just stolen from the good farmer, his own brother. And remembering that the horrid sneaky man wanted to be mayor, the little peasant hit upon a plan and started to shout, um, No, I will not do it. If the whole world insists on it, I will not do it. Hey, what's the matter in there? said the sneaky brother. They want to make me the mayor of the whole village if I stay in this barrel for an hour. But I'm fed up with it and I don't want to do it. Hey, I'll do it, said the sneaky brother. I'll be the mayor. And he got straight into the barrel. The little peasant shut the top down on him and went home to his wife, taking the big herd of sheep with him. 
The villagers came back to the barrel after lunch and rolled it straight into the sea. Glug, 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 down it went, and they all went home. Ah, ha, 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 laughing. But when they got back, there in the middle of the village was the little peasant, looking quite happy, with a huge flock of sheep beside him. Hey, how did you get there? Weren't you in the sea? Oh, uh, yes, said the peasant, and uh, <laughs> at the bottom of the sea there are hundreds of sheep. So I brought a few of them back with me. But this is unbelievable, said the villagers. This is fantastic. Let's all go and get some free sheep for ourselves. Ah, 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 me first, said the mayor. So the mayor and the whole village jumped over the edge of the cliff. Splash! Splish! That was a thin one. Splosh! That was a fat one. Bonk! That was one who didn't jump far enough and hit the beach. And the whole village was drowned. Because they were horrible. Because, as we know, that's what happens at the bottom of the sea. So the little peasant was left in charge of everything. He wrote to all his cousins, who were even poorer than he was, and they came to live in the rich people's houses. He made the good farmer, the mayor, and they changed the name of the village to Extremely Lovely on Sea. <laughs>